Words of Wisdom is brought to you by Essentia Health and TV3 and LB Video Productions. I'm Dottie Eggy from Pelican Rapids, and I was born at Rotsay, Minnesota, uh, 90 years ago. And my family, my mom and dad moved 10 times from the time I was born until my father and mother started a mink ranch three miles east of Pelican uh, was when he quit farming and started mink ranching. So I've lived a lot of places. But we ended up here in Pelican. Uh, my husband and I always lived here near Pelican. My parents were Orville and Mabel Flayton. Uh, they were both from the Ratze area. My, my mother was from the Dalton area to begin with. My dad and his family had a farm uh, just out of Ratze. Yeah, so uh, I got to know my grandpa Flayton uh, and my grandma Peterson, who was my mother's mother, so I was fortunate to have a couple grandparents while I grew up. So how many were in your family? Just my sister and I. My sister lives in Fergus Falls, and she's seven years younger than I am. Uh, she has four children, so we get to see each other very often. And what was life like growing up on a mink farm? Well, I didn't really grow. I grew up more in the, on the farms where Dad was farming than I did the mink ranch. I maybe lived at the ranch for, I don't know, four years going through high school. And uh, then I left home. But uh, uh, he had a very... Uh, it, I thought it was an interesting profession to go into. He had worked previously uh, over towards Burgess, Minnesota at Ingemar Peterson's Fox Farm. And Ingemar also had mink. So I think that's where Dad got interested in mink rate ranching. And uh, every fall they pelted out the mink right around Thanksgiving. and. Uh, we did quite a few hundred mink every uh, every fall. My sister and I did all the mink skinning. Dad had no boys. The two weeks you were mink skinning, you smelled to high heaven. That mink scent was horrible. And it got into your hands, and you could hardly get it out. And then there was other things that, uh, once you got the mink skinned, you had to get all the fat off the skin. So we had people come in and do that, and then my mother and her sister put the mink pelts onto long boards, and then they were hung up in the ceiling in, in the uh, pelting house to dry till they could sell them. So it was, it was a very interesting profession. I think farm life was the best life I've ever had. It was just... We milked cows and you had your chores to do, wash the separator, which was a horrible thing to do. And uh, no, I, I think I had a very good life. My parents were very, very good people and uh, gave us some standards to go by, I felt. How about your high school days? What are <clears throat> some of the differences maybe than today? I don't know, I rode the school bus. Um, because that, that was when we were three miles east of Pelican on the fur farm. And uh, sports weren't as big a thing then as what they are now. They seemed to kind of taken over, you know, everybody's Saturdays and even on Sundays there's ball games and, and things like that. But uh, other than that, going to school was, uh, I think, enjoyable here in Pelican. I married a guy from Barnesville. I met him when I was going with, with his cousin. And uh, we got married in, let's see, I graduated in 51, got married in 52. Uh, I had our daughter in 53. And then four years from that time I had Danny, and four years from that time I had Stephen, and that's the family. And uh, we pretty much lived here in the Pelican area all the time. Chuck started out uh, being a farmer, and then he was a mechanic. And then 
We had a small house we were renting in Pelican, and we moved up by the golf course here in Pelican and built a home, and then we started our own construction company. Uh, we started out with a gravel truck and a backhoe, and uh, we had no employees, of course, to start with, just he and I. How it went with two people, it was kind of tough to begin with, but he would maybe take the backhoe out to our gravel pit, which is out by uh, Prairie Lake, one of them. And then I'd gather the kids into the gravel truck and go out there, and he'd fill the gravel truck, uh, bring it back, drop us off at the house, and go deliver the load of gravel. So that's how we started it out. Did you help with the business? Yes, I was down in the office for many years until we got, we hired Dar Hovland, who lives out of town, she's Mrs. Wayne Hovland, and she worked for us for 43 years. She just retired a couple of years ago. In 99, uh, the boys bought the business from me, and they have run it and done a beautiful job with uh, really enlarging it, too. I mean, we had more than a backhoe and a, and a gravel truck when they were born, of course, but uh, They've done a beautiful job with running it. What is something you're most proud of? My family, I think. Um, with the three children and six grandchildren and five great-grandchildren, um, they've just, they've been normal kids, but they've been very, uh, uh, a very good bunch of, of kids. I'm very proud of them. And uh, like I say, my daughter lives at St. Michael with and her two children live down that way, but we gather at my lake cabin on Tamarack Lake every 4th of July. That's kind of our Christmas and birthday get together. Everybody tries to make it out there. Being you lived in Pelican most of your life, mm -hmm. how, you know, what was Pelican like back in the 50s? Well, we had a lot more stores than we have now. We maybe had three grocery stores and uh, a menswear store, a shoe store. Um, compared to what we've got now, it's really quite sad. There just aren't that many small businesses left in town. Was it a touristy town at, at that time? Oh, it is now, too. Not as much then as now, but it's very much a tourist town now. Did you have a favorite store you like to go to? Oh, the dime store. <laughs> that was, and you maybe had a dollar to spend if you had that. What would you get? I don't even remember the thing. I'm sure candy was in there somewhere. But, uh, yeah, because we had a clothing store and, and things like that, and uh, it was a big deal to go to Fargo, North Dakota. I know that. I used to, when I lived out in the country, where my, uh, uh, the house we built the year that Chuck passed away, uh, I would walk into town a lot just to get the exercise and, and uh, then it was usually a trip down by the Pelican, which was fun, and it was fun to see what they did with the uh, dam and things this year. Uh, it looks very, very nice. I'm very proud of our town. I think it is. Uh, we had uh, Brent Fraser up here speaking to us the other day, and uh, he was telling us about things that they're trying to do here in town, and he's a very good guy to begin with. What is your farm now? Is, is that, is, are there buildings still there, the main farm? The buildings are still there. It's uh, when you go out 108 East, uh, it, you go through what's called the Three Mile Woods, and then uh, about a half a mile up the road on the right-hand side, um, you would, it would just be a farm to you now before Dad had 14 mink sheds on there, which they are gone now. But, uh, so we were lucky enough to be close to town and close to lakes, which we took advantage of, and yeah. What did you guys do at the lake? Just fishing, swimming. My husband loved to uh, ice fish and, and uh, things like that, so. Well, to me, the world has just gone completely flip-flop. Uh, 
There are so many things now that we, well, take for instance, uh, President's Day, to me, I learned in school was February 22nd. Well now, didn't we celebrate it the 20th or 21st or something? I mean, too many things are being changed that were history when I was growing up and, and the younger years. And I, I don't like to see that. And I know change is hard, especially when you get to be as old as I am, but um, there's so many things that are changing. Uh, I don't think they have the respect for things like we used to have. People would maybe get into an argument and somebody might poke somebody in the chest or them. now they take out a gun and stab them or kill them. I just, uh, I, I just think our world is really in a world of hurt. And I really dread what my great-grandchildren have to grow up in if things don't change. What would, what would you say to somebody who, as they're getting older and, and maybe getting a little grouchy, what would you say to them? I think I've always had quite a positive attitude, I think, which helps. I had uh, ovarian cancer when I was 50, and God gave me the grace to still be here. And uh, so I worked through a lot of things like that, but I haven't lost any of my children, thank God. And uh, What are some words of wisdom that you would like to give to people? Try to lead a good life. Um, I have a great faith. I belong to Trinity Church across the street, and uh, I think my family is a very faith-driven family as well, which makes me happy. But other than that, uh, like I say, I have a good life. Essentia Health, our presenting sponsor, is proud to bring you Words of Wisdom. and TV3 and LB Video Productions.